Hey everybody, welcome to the NEPA Scene Podcast, the only live streaming in-person arts and entertainment podcast covering Northeastern Pennsylvania, offering a true alternative voice in local media. We're coming to you from the NEPA Scene studio underneath Center City Print in downtown Scranton. I'm Rich Howells, the founder and editor of NEPA Scene, and tonight we're here with Archibald folk singer-songwriter Charles Havira. We're going to premiere the music video for his new song, Walk With Me, and talk about creating music for over 30 years, uh, recording two new live albums back-to-back at the Bog in Scranton and New Langola uh, Union Chapel, assembling a live band, uh, bringing these recordings together at Windmill Agency, uh, his past and future work, and much, much more. So please stay tuned for the full hour. We would love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. So. Uh, whether you've known Charles a long time, you want to get to know him, you have uh, any kind of questions uh, that pertain to our conversation or anything you want to add, please leave that down below. We will get to those later on in the show. Uh, before we dive in, I just want to thank our sponsor, Center City Print, who's provided this amazing studio space for us. You can use promo code NEPA scene in person and online at Center City Print for 10% off. Center City Print can bring your ideas to life in three locations. Scranton, Kingston, and Hazleton. These one-stop shops are locally owned and operated, offering high-quality printed products, copy and custom print services, and design solutions to help you, your small business, your nonprofit, your band, your photography, your art project, or any venture thrive. Visit them now at centercityprint.com and use promo code NEPACene online or in person for 10% off. We also want to show off our new uh, feature, Ink of the Week. I'll put that up on the screen there. I want to thank Electric City Tattoo, also in downtown Scranton, for being the first tattoo shop in the area to participate. Uh, this week's Peaks is by uh, Balash Marcos. And just a reminder that the annual Electric City Tattoo Convention is coming up April 12th through 14th at the Hilton in Scranton. Uh, so whether you stop by the shop or the convention, Make sure you get your next tattoo uh, with Electric City. They've actually done all of mine as well. Uh, all right, so let's get into it. What uh, what got you interested in music originally? Was this something you grew up with as a kid? Uh, there was my mother, Elizabeth Havira, had this 69 con classical acoustic guitar in our living room. Mm. And... I didn't play it for the longest time, but when I was in my um, maybe 17, I started showing interest and I think I'm a little bit ambidextrous. Okay. And so I was, should I do it like this? <laughs> I shoot, shooting pool this way is lefty, is that right? Right? Yep. And so I was doing, I was doing some things differently. And then I eventually got it, uh, and then I wouldn't stop playing. Mm. And, you know, my friends were interested and then disinterested really early, <laughs> you know, into me going into it. But I never heard that because I was so enthralled with the guitar and these songs mm. that took me somewhere else. It was my approach to you know, playing these songs that I really liked and kind of putting my own um, approach on each one. Um, whether it was the same approach, I, I don't know. But uh, I think the one saying um, that was it. And maybe it was just in my blood on both sides, my father's side. Mm. Um, and my mother's side, they were both musical. My mother um, sang and played guitar, and my grandfather played tenor banjo uh, with the Nighthawks. Oh, cool! And um, that was in the in the thirties, and so that was always around. The banjo was there again. I never really um, got myself to that instrument, but the guitar that was in the living room, it ended up traveling with me to concerts and 
parties and just hangout sessions when we were in high school and it grew from there okay when did you start like writing your own music and like thinking about like putting an album together that sort of stuff or always uh well i would say uh my first gig uh mary ellen moore from south wilkesbury she lives out in ohio now she got me my first gig which was pretty awesome uh great woman uh incredible uh family just uh a good friend two friend to her friends and uh she i think she ended up speaking with mitch cornfeld um maybe at the at palooka's diner back in 90 maybe 1990 something okay. like that or mid 1990 or late 90 uh and she got me this or yeah or or maybe 91 something around there um and i got this wednesday night gig and it was awesome I and mean, people were coming out uh it was a steady thing uh i had uh been playing those songs for a little while that inspired me these bob dylan songs uh or grateful dead songs and a lot of folk songs that i learned from the joan baez songbook okay and big baez fan um the documentary is really cool if you get to see it um and you you find out a lot about joan in in that documentary that you wouldn't have thought of just being a listener to her music and what she's done uh with activism uh and in her life and but uh i would say maybe around 91 there was some songs of my own that were coming out around okay. there and uh then what happened at that point is people were coming out friends that I went to high school with who were also musicians ended up playing with me okay in this in this uh in a diner uh, or an old school diner I, I think that's somewhere in Florida now <laughs> um and great coffee I, I remember the coffee was awesome um and uh good breakfast I wish that you know you need a good diner that's that's for sure but around 91 bands uh the band formed and i started started playing uh before the band got together before a drummer and a bass player uh, or other guitar players uh there was some of uh we didn't have a name and we wanted to maybe call ourselves electric strings you know? mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah yeah there you go. yeah wow and um uh we started playing uh harmonica percussion and uh and myself playing guitar and singing and then that morphed into getting a band together um but we would we would uh, play around Wilkesbury um, at various places, and having support from my family, um, my aunt and uncle, and they're they're, they're from uh, South Wilkesbury as well, uh, and right down the street, their friends, they would be our my first fans my family members and family friends and they would come out to these bars or non bar situation uh because i think i was maybe like you know i was still i think underage uh, but i was able to play in uh bars at the time it was a different time back then right um uh, but uh, that was a lot of fun. And then it turned into a band situation where 
uh, something was formed and we called ourselves Freight Train. And then we started playing college parties, other bar, excuse me, excuse me, uh, bar situations, parties, basements, outdoor pig roast. Uh, we ended up uh, doing Monday nights at CC's in music. And for a while there, we had a revolving door of bass, uh, guitar. We had a different guitar player every, every other Monday night, it seemed. <laughs> and then uh, we had the same bass player. Um, but then things were changing and Freight Train was starting to form. We had some of our own music where it, you know, it multiplied in the songs from where they started forming at Palooka's Diner to uh, playing bars in Wilkes-Barre to playing other bars in another county uh, to various other places. And that's Freight Train really, uh, we ended up getting a lineup that was the same. And then we really started to create our own sound, our own music. And it was exciting. And then at that time, of course, we did think of, all right, let's make an album. But we never really did it um, until, uh, I think, maybe late 92 or 93, we, we went up to, um, where was it, in Hoboken. Um, the studio's not there anymore. And we played live and it was really, it, it was, uh, I'll send it to you. It's, it, it was, it was some pretty solid stuff. We were in, in that time period, things were really happening. Um, we were experimental in our, in our playing and performing. We we're pretty dynamic uh, with the, the sounds we were creating, whether it was like blues or folk or rock you know, jazz oriented improvisation, you know, some songs went on for 20 minutes and then we'd have other songs that would just be, you know, four minute songs. Uh, but we started to play around, uh, around the state and then we started traveling out, out of state and playing. And we did that till, uh, I think 99, um, then freight train, uh, did some reun reunion shows throughout the years, as I think not too long ago, maybe. Um, was I was going to say, year? wasn't there one a few years? Uh, yeah, there was one or two ago? down at Carl Hall, not, okay. too, not yeah. too long ago. I think a year and a half ago, was it? Mm -hmm. um, and it felt really good. We got to play with some other players. That that was a great room and a sad thing that it's not. Yeah, that, that is it's a, not uh, available anymore. That but. Is a but it's good that it's still the building's still there. That's for right. sure. Yeah. Which is it is a historic, historic building in Wilkesbury. So, uh, at what point during or was it maybe during the this uh, when you were in freight train that you were thinking about making your own stuff and doing solo uh, music? Or? That was uh, near the end, near maybe late nineties. I started. I kind of went back to what I was doing when I kind of started playing um, and I think one of the first times I did that was at Proof Rocks um, right over here on Cross from the Bog and uh, and some things were happening there um, but Freight Train played a, a couple uh, a few more years uh, somewhat con in, in uh, we had, you know, we had I don't know what a, a somewhat of a set steady schedule for the for the months that we were playing for the next few years, but we started going our separate ways, um, and then I started playing under my own name and playing the songs that some of the songs that Freight Train was playing, but not so much sounding exactly like 
freight train because mm-hmm. we, we couldn't really uh, the the band members that came together they weren't the same as the other band members they had different bass approach drums guitar so we never really it, it was pretty free form uh really because the the band uh charles javira band was chb and when you saw the charles javira band you were seeing hb because my band was called hb okay and they were an improvisational group. And so that took on a different approach to the songs where, you know, we would take it here. And so it wouldn't be the same as uh, uh, as a performance by Freight Train, even though we were experimental, kind of different players, different sure. approach. So the stuff that you have out now that you know people can find online and things like that, you have this very uh, calm, soothing voice. Did you always sing like that, or is that something that kind of developed over time? I think that's I think that's uh, what it's always been like. I, it's what I feel comfortable with. Uh, I I'm it's very distinct. You know, I hear it and I instantly know it's you. Okay, that's a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, I, it seems like I always want to kind of bring things down, mm. uh, or to a to a certain tone, and uh, I, again, not to say everything is the same, but is that. To me, if someone said something along the lines about this uh, this group called Lungfish, if you ever heard of them, mm-hmm. uh, somebody said something like, uh, "It's it's like it's all one song. Every song sounds the same, but it's the best <laughs> song." Okay, something along those lines. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying that I have the best songs, but the approach of saying, okay, you know, like, uh, what was it? Um, the singer from, to- I think Toad the Wet Sprocket did a Kiss song. Hmm. Um, rock and roll and I party every day. Um, is that the title of that song? Do you know that? It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, I want rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. It's and like the kiss song it, everybody knows. Right. He brings it down to this level, to this major mellow level. Yeah. And I kind of want to do that with songs I hear like, no, I would do that slower. Okay. Or I, I, my approach would be taking it a different direction, whereas, or at least try to. Yeah. Uh, but it, you know, with some of the stuff that's on the, the new recording... The live, the the full band one, you know, we really, we've been trying to do that for years, years and years and years to capture uh, what we do live. That that's our thing, mm. uh, and we did it not only at the bog in a live setting with people out there and. You know, no overdubs. I mean, this is this is what it sounded like if yeah. you were there. And the same thing went for these new songs that we did at Windmill. Uh, my, my last two songs, the band, the bands we brought in, we had minimal uh, practice or rehearsal, uh, minimal to none, and that's kind of what we want what i was going for whether or not everybody they were they were on board they were they were there and they always are and they're every time we play it it really is a magical thing for me because it they just take me to this place of that i can't i can't uh i would not be able to find by myself Hmm. you know they they take me to these these outer regions of space and time with 
how they create sounds from their instruments and how they play them. And they put it to the songs that I've written. And it's, it's an honor to play with these guys. And I've been doing it for years. And so we finally were able to capture this, this live music in a live setting, but also live in the studio as well. Mm. And so I, I'm thrilled that we got them. They're here. They're going to be. Um, they're going to be available relatively soon for everyone to listen to. So you've done a couple of of live recordings and stuff over the years. Yeah. Uh, you know what goes into a live recording? Uh, you know, album versus a you know putting together a studio album or something like that. What What is the what? How do you prepare? to uh you know because this, this is kind of a one take sort of thing where you're going in and like however it's going to come out on that stage is going to yeah. come out so I'm, I'm assuming there's probably a lot of rehearsals preparation things like that that's just it the, the, the funny thing is with that bog recording um i wanted i was approaching it with the idea of doing rehearsals and what songs what a normal person <laughs> <laughs> what a normal person would do. Right. And of course we did not do that. <laughs> of course uh, not. And we was all brought around to, what am I doing? And so I talked to the guys again. Should we practice? No, we never do. Mm. Like we, I think as my band has practiced with this, with this current lineup that's on the bot or are, are really that's um, core group. I, I think we might have practiced once mm -hmm. of all the, and we've been playing for, I mean, for twenty years. Yeah, you know, or is that what, could be fifteen maybe. Uh, what is it? Twenty? Oh no, twenty years. What am I saying? Time flies. Yeah. Um, and and it was good that we didn't because we started the show off with this song and I forgot lyrics, you know, this song that I the the songs that we have that are gonna be on this uh live bog release are older songs. Uh rel some older than some much older than others with the idea of having yet another live bog recording to come hopefully in late August, oh, okay. something like that to kind of do a volume two maybe, mm -hmm. um, and to do newer newer songs because it, it, the, this is uh, going to be an EP. Uh, so it's, uh, it's still gonna be, I don't know, maybe, yeah half hour w worth of music which is along the lines of what i've been putting out in the studio uh recordings that i've done in the past it's all been around that 30 35 minutes of music and we we i totally <laughs> forgot the lyrics <laughs> stop the song all right guys <laughs> let's start over that's our sound check Okay. Because we honestly we really didn't get much of a sound check and then we just went into it and there was a vibe there for the whole first set um and uh it just felt really really good. Um it it was it was definitely an expression. I mean, we 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 left it all out on the stage that night. And that's what we like to do uh, when we do play together um, in this band formation. Um, there were, you know, there were some stressful things going on uh, that our uh, one band member was cut his finger. So he, he didn't really want to play he was being careful with the keyboards and the saxophone and the flute. And okay. Then he lost hold of his, his uh, the, what holds the saxophone that goes around the neck. Mm. 
and then he kind of got stressed out about that. Yeah. But he's such a great musician. You know, you listen to the playback of what he played. What are you talking? I, I don't. <laughs> you know you what never you're know. About. It sounded amazing. Yeah. So, but we did because he didn't want that. We didn't shoot. We didn't use that one. Okay. Um, but there, it was going to be six tunes, but it comes down to the four that I think we're going to start with. And maybe maybe we'll release those other two online as well, mm. you know. Um, but uh, it's definitely something that I am extremely excited about because it has been so long that we've talked about it but didn't really have the opportunity. And so I said, let's just go, let's just do this. You got to get it done. Yeah. Okay. Why? What's hold? You know. What's holding us back? Nothing. Yeah. So we got it and we did it and, and we want to do it again. How did this uh, this uh, particular formation come together in the first place? Uh, you know, you've uh, been playing together so long. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, just as that rotating door was moving with freight train, uh, there was. There's going to be a a, a bunch of. I mean, I can get into this, and I, I'll start naming naming people. <laughs> yeah. Um, like when when Palooka started, and uh, I think it was Wednesday nights. I was doing stuff, uh, and then we start. I started playing. I started hanging out uh, at King's College. And made friends um, and had, because of uh, excuse me, uh, because of uh, just social gatherings, you, you know, you make friends and excuse me. Uh, and so I had some friends from Kingston and this girl I knew excuse me, uh, she was in a relationship with this guy, John Blake, and he was a guitar, he's from Virginia, but he was living across from Sununis's, um, uh, which was part of Margaritaville. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, the dorm, it was an apartment building and a lot of parties, okay. a lot of parties. And so we started playing together. Um, and then, who, uh, two guys that I went to high school with, and their father was teaching at King's, uh, Andy and Chris Scappatici. So there was Andy, Chris, John, and myself, and we, that was, that was pre-Freight Train, and we were playing around, uh, and it was awesome playing with those guys. And I'm then it, I don't how it transformed. I'm not sure because just time time goes by and yeah. Uh, so freight train was kind of forming. We ended up spending some time in Bloomsburg, uh, but as things were changing at Palookas, there was John Gaffney who came in on bass, who I went to high school with. Justin Gibbon on drums and so that was that's where Freight Train formed John Justin and myself then we started playing with a guy I knew from the Poconos who's from outside of Philadelphia uh, Bob Strausser and he was the guitar player but then John the bass player wasn't playing so actually kevin from plymouth who went to bishop hoban with john justin and myself he ended up playing bass but then he ended up playing guitar and then bob stopped playing <laughs> so then we got dave narowski from old forge and we were playing around as freight train and then after dave left there was uh uh, this guy, John McLaughlin, he played, um, I mean, there was, uh, 
Brian McGee who played guitar with us for a, a few shows. Um, so it was changing around, but then we had or need we had the need of a bass player, and it turned out that mutual friends, uh, I believe I, I I'm not sure of how it came about. Probably something as simple as, hey, you want to play bass? And it was Mark Kaisinger from Mere Mortals. Mm. And because they were playing around at that time, uh, and so were we. So I think something came about. And so Mark is that bass player who's on the Bog record. Uh, Nick Driscoll, who played flute and keyboards keyboard um he was i think the first time i saw him he was playing with george wesley and he had just i mean we you know we've been musical uh circles and eventually hey you want to you want to play sometime like we're doing something mm -hmm. i think that might have I, I can't remember when that happened the first time. Um, but then AJ Jump was maybe 2000, maybe 2005, 2006. Um, because we end, I ended up, uh, you know, we were playing. Uh, at that point, after after I was playing music under my own name after Freight Train, I did that for a few years, and then I started uh, promoting music uh, under the, the title Cornucopia Productions Presents, whoever it might be. And so I stopped playing, and I I ended up being the guy who was booking. Hmm. Um, and then... Eventually, <laughs> uh, things happen in business, and of course. Uh, <laughs> dot dot dot. Yeah. Um, things happen. Some win, some lose, mm -hmm. and um, so I started playing music and writing some new music, and needed a drummer and I think AJ was studying with Marco Marcinko at the time hmm. and Marco I, who I had played with for a little bit um, Pat Flynn um, Mark Kaisinger and Marco Marcinko that was a version of the Charles Severe band for a while as well um, and then again, things were just morphing and we did, uh, the self, my self-titled album in Newfield, New York at Electric Wilberland and AJ played on and that and Nick also played, uh, did horn arrangements and he, he was part of that. And I'd say Justin Mazur trying to think when he when we started playing maybe I don't know after 2000 maybe 2010 something like that okay um, but the the core the core group for that um, recording session at Electric Wilberland actually was um, uh, Mike Quinn on bass John Novakovic John Nova uh, on guitar, AJ and myself, and we had uh, we had some other players as well from the New York area and um, up the Ithaca surrounding towns and stuff. Um, but we had a couple guys, two horn guys, come up during a major blizzard. It was it was fun. <laughs> uh, but I would say maybe around 2009, 2010, Justin Mazur joined in and we tried to play as, as much as possible. 
So let's get into the actual uh, recordings here. So uh, I, I believe, uh, so live at Union Chapel, yeah. uh, that's going to be released, is that April 23rd? Or is yes. That, okay, so that one's April 23rd, live yep. at the Bog, set uh, for May 21st? Yes. Okay. So let's let's get into uh, some of the tracks on there. Uh, we do a little segment uh, called the breakdown, and uh, where we go track by track on an artist's release to hear the inspiration and stories behind each song. And I know the uh, track list isn't totally set for live at Union Chapel yet, but we'll just kind of go. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll riff with what we got. Yeah. Um, and this can be about the lyrics, the composition, the recording, like whatever you might think is more interesting or. Uh, you know, as a highlight of that particular track or, you know, whatever pops in your mind. So we'll start with uh, uh, the Bog EP, since that's what we've been uh, uh, talking a lot about. Yeah. Uh, Show Me the Way is the... Show Me the Way. I can't remember... I can't remember exactly... It's not about anyone. Mm. Uh, It's more about something. Um... Uh, dealing more in a physical, sexual, passion, uh, thought, uh, uh, wanting to put the listener or into a place that will make them f- feel comfortable. You know, in in a just kind of like taking you somewhere and letting you relax. Uh, you know, let show me uh, show me the way. I'll show you the way. Um, it's it's really just kind of like a state of mind of uh, me me thinking of maybe places I've been with a certain person and where I, you know, where I want to be or what I'm going to be doing when I'm with that person or where we're going to go or how we'll be together or how it'll feel somewhere. It's something like that. Okay. So definitely a, a more personal one. Uh, I would, I would, I wouldn't say personal. I would say more so for persons Mm. to kind of say, you know, what, what is it for you? Mm. You know, this is some, this is kind of what we all get into at one point or another with someone, Mm. um, or, or multiple people. Yeah. And so kind of. You know, it's, you know, show me the way to, you know, what do you, you know, where do you want me to, where do you want to go with this? You know, where, you know, this is awesome. This is, you know, uh, again, some kind of sensual, uh, uh, ecstasy, ecstasy, uh, happening. You know, it's just, so relatable. You know. But yeah, I think other people can relate to that, and maybe you know, if you if you put this on, it could it could take you back to a time or a future time where either you want to move in and imagine something for yourself, perhaps. I never really thought too much about it kind of just did it <laughs> but it's it's not it's not about any one it's not about a person it's just about a, a thing that we all feel and we, okay. that we want to express hmm. uh, next up we have uh, John Riley John Riley I believe that's a Bob Gibson song and this is about a, a man and a woman uh a man goes um, goes away, and the woman never stops loving him. And so the man comes back. 
to see this woman and said, well, what if, you know, hey, you know, can, can something happen between us? Maybe there's years have gone by where uh, she didn't recognize him. And so he asks her questions, you know, can this, you know, first and foremost, I'm going to, you know, he's trying to feel the situation out. And she says, no, you know, not interested. And then he asks questions. Well, what if, what if he's, what if he's found another love? What if he's, what if he's died? What if he's this or that? And she pretty much says, you know, well, if I love him so much that if he found love somewhere else, I hope he's happy. I hope both of them are happy. Mm. Um, you know, if he's, if he's drowned, died, um, she, she pray for him and she'll, you know, uh, hope that he he it wasn't extremely painful mm -hmm. um but and a couple other other what ifs take place uh in the song between the two of them um and in the end in in like a number of folk songs uh the the one uh who comes from out of nowhere or from the past comes back almost in a disguise or unrecognizable as I said and he says you know takes her kisses her and says I'm your long lost John Riley so they end up mm. coming together and being together like they once were next up we have uh, Freely B Freely B is is about someone wanting to be for for things that happen in your life and you just want them gone you just want to move on you just want to I just, I, you know, I just want to go back to who I was. You know, I don't, I don't want this pain in my life. I don't want this shackle of, you know, terrible times, uh, whether it's betrayal or, uh, you name it, you know, it, it, the, anything that's going to hurt your heart or hurt yourself. Um, that's pretty much, you know, um, uh, what it's mainly about is just wanting to be, to be, to freely be mm -hmm. yourself, to be who you are and to move on from this negative, uh, chapter in your life. And the last one on the, the, the blog EP is uh, The Way I Want to Paint. Yeah, that's, that is about um, it's, a, it's a poem that um, this person I knew wrote and I, I contributed a little bit to it and it's mainly about um, how you get um, uh, you get hung up on numbers, like the number of people you've been with mm -hmm. or the number of uh, just the numbers that you're like, oh, you know, uh, 
your past, you know, that you're, you're, you're as a relationship moves on to something else or someone else, uh, the numbers add up after time. And so this poem is, is writing, saying, uh, you know, remember when you did this, um, you helped me, you picked me up off the ground and what in the poem it, or in poem song, it, uh, saying that, uh, what, what, uh, this person wishes for, um, to be in their life. Um, that I, I, I wish for, you know, I wish, um, you would, I, I wish you'd paint me by numbers in the soft light, um, to have these, to have these intimate times together, um, where you were close with a person, um, but you, but this person does not want to be associated with their past. And so that's why, um, it said no more number, you know, no more numbers, because I don't want these numbers to, uh, interfere with the relationship they were having. It's a nice sentiment. So uh, we're the uh, other uh, EP uh, at the U Union Chapel mm -hmm. um, has a walk with me on it. Yeah. And uh, you w wanted us to uh, to show the video for that. Yeah. So maybe we'll, we'll uh, if you could introduce that song and, and talk a little bit about what that one means. Yeah, that's a song uh, I wrote for my wife. And it's about the first time that I saw her. And... Uh, again, shout out to the bog, um, <laughs> because that's where it was. And what a magical place it is. <laughs> it really is. And I, I really love her so much. And I wanted to express this to the world, uh, in song and, um, uh, it, you know, it, it starts off uh, that I was outside and she was with her girlfriends and I was uh, attending to something because I, I was working that night. And it throughout the evening, I just was looking at her and we were... we exchanging glances and um, and uh, uh, a part of the song puts me um, where I'm actually above everyone else like I'm ascending above the bar and watching the people but really the main focus is is my future wife and um, really it's just my love song for her well let's uh let's give it a play and uh you guys uh can watch that and we'll be right back uh, with the rest of the interview
Throwing coins across the way You walked into my life With each step you took I watched floorboards to the lights Had to glance again and ask myself was I right Will you walk with me Standing now above the crowd Who do not know their place In a whisper I heard you call me dear It's what's behind your eyes right now That controls my fate Will you walk with me Will you walk with me in hand through time alone? We can wipe away our fears In this time we'll heal the wounds with love Do split pea soup, right? You ever do that? Or ham and bean, ham and bean, mm. right? You can make a ham salad if you want to make. Yeah, uh, there's not salad. much left. Yeah, yeah. I've been, so I'm thinking maybe just drop it in for the flavor, and maybe some of the meat, mm. and then throw in some beans. I got to look up that one. Yeah, we're 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 back. We're talking about uh, Easter ham, uh, so we, we went a little off, a little off topic oh, okay. uh, during the the music video. But we're good. We're good. We're back. We're back. Um, so um, we'll talk about a couple of the the uh, uh, tracks that are on uh, the Union Chapel one. Um, last night I had the strangest dream because that that's a that's a title that just sticks out. Yeah, that is uh, that is not one of my songs. Um, but, uh, there's, there's many versions out there, mm -hmm. uh, but the sentiment of the song is peace. Uh, you know, there's, it, it, it says, you know, how these men are running the world, um, for power and fortune and it doesn't matter what it takes to get it who dies um, who has to be murdered or you know to 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 get to this point in life and it's really this dream of uh, this songwriter who said these men gathered in this room and wrote, on a piece of paper that we're never going to fight again. All right, we're it's done. Yeah. But this is it. This is this is a dream, obviously, because I'm not going to start on that conversation <laughs> because you might you might not. That's pretty timely to what's going on it's, right now. So I mean, but I, it needs. Sadly, but, it's always timely. But but the thing is, it needs to be talked about. Sure. Because uh, uh, it it needs to be talked about. But in this in this song in this dream, uh, which is a possibility, um, you know, while they're writing on this, these men are writing on this paper saying that they will never fight again. 
you'll never kill again. Uh, it says, you know, people on the streets below, they were dancing round and round. Swords, guns, and the uniforms of the soldiers <laughs> scattered on the ground because they were done with it. They knew it was all happening. Um, and uh, this is a, a, a just myself on this, but uh, from the self-titled album, I actually recorded this with Hank uh, Roberts on cello, and uh, um, Max Buck Max Buckholtz and uh, Judy Hyman, and they put this string. Uh, arrangement together or, or Hank put the arrangement together but the three of them played it and there's this intro and outro that he wrote and it's it's really powerful uh, but mainly peace that's that's what we're looking for uh, Heart of the City was another one that Heart of the out. City uh, that that was off my first solo album, Holiday, and it was about uh, when I went to San Francisco and I just expressed in the lyrics what it was like one day that I was walking from one... Because you can walk San Francisco. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's a, I mean, San Francisco itself is huge. But the city kind of is, is very walk, it, it's definitely walkable. I mean, there's some hills, oh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely walkable. And I was told, you know, don't go here, don't go here, this is okay, that's okay, definitely don't go here. <laughs> uh, but I did go through the places that I was told not to go through. And I never encountered anything that they were that these people were saying, you know, don't go there because this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so it's a it's a positive um, painting of the city. Um, you know, the one lyric says, um, uh, I, "I was on I was on this bus." going somewhere and I mean um, I think it was in the like near the Fillmore area Fillmore Street and this one part of it was a little rougher and the lyric says you know all I heard was conversation I didn't I didn't mm -hmm. see any knives or guns or I wasn't held up or anything like that I just heard people talking about day to day yeah. life um, so that's that's pretty much you know just uh, uh, what occurred that one day when I was in that city. Uh, how about uh, there's a place for us? There's a place for us uh, is a song about escape um, into. The mountains, you know, uh, dreamlike, wishing that, you know, there's a place for us, uh, or there's a place for, for anyone um, to be with who they'd like to be, really. Uh, the approach of the song, um, you know, in your world of freedom, there is a place for us taken from the mountains we've climbed. Uh, it's, it's kind of about a relationship on, um, you know, where it's going to take you. Um, but in the end, um, wanting or knowing that there's a place for us. When you're looking back on these songs that you've, you know, written before, you know, stuff like Heart of the City where, you know, from, you know, your very early stuff, 
Does it take you back to those times? Do you look at them differently now? Uh, there, I'm, there, I, some songs take me back to the same place every single time. Mm -hmm. Some definitely, um, I could look at it in, in, in approach of how it could or how it is um, with other people. Um, and their and their relationships or or their uh, their uh, journey through life and what they're encounter encountering uh, definitely um, I could with um, singing the singing the song or in performance with the band definitely with the band and where they take the song sonically which makes me approach with my vocals a whole it, it it seems like it might not be a different thing but in my mind and the way i'm expressing the lyrics or whether i'm louder or softer i i think about you know where this song is or who are who is i if i open my eyes you know who am i looking at and how are what are they they're listening to this. They're watching us. They're listening to my words. What What are they thinking about? Yeah. You know, and then, or if I know certain people, or if I can look in the distance and there's, you know, uh, a number of people there and it's almost a story going on itself. But the, the story's already here because it's the song that was written and it's being sung, mm -hmm. but being interpreted Maybe I'm creating something in my mind, even though I'm singing the same words, mm -hmm. thinking how it would play out in the audience. Almost kind of building on kind what of, you yeah. had established already. Yeah. Mm. And definitely if there's uh, multiple people there, that just expands the whole thought. Mm. Speaking of which, you know, what is it like to record an album at a place like The Bog? You know, you've got that great intimacy yeah uh but it's also kind of a, a loud sort of thing i'm sure people knew going in that it right. was going to be a recording but still you know people talk all that kind of stuff you know there was a it was it was really easy uh um sean haggerty was uh the sound engineer and he's been working at the bog for years um and I've been playing at the Bog for years, so I'm, and each each band member has played at the Bog for numerous times. Sure, throughout probably the too years. many times. Many, to count. Met, they just, <laughs> I mean, they they play they've played there frequently, mm -hmm. and so we're all comfortable with the place. Mm -hmm. uh, and Eric Ritter from Windmill Agency, he the the equipment that he brought down. Uh, captured it beautifully. Yeah, it sounds uh, great. Thank you. Uh, Eric did such an amazing, amazing job uh, on that. I, I, I remember only days later, he sent me the rough mixes, and I, I almost can't tell the difference. I mean, he did such a great job. I mean, things were boosted and mixed to a certain frequency I don't I don't know anything about that uh, and yeah you could tell the difference in the mastered version mm. but the the mix the rough mix itself really was uh, just done incredibly well and I think I was still pumped from just playing a few days ago yeah t to listening wow <laughs> I know it felt it really I mean that night felt incredible and we we were really loose but almost every single song we we got to a point where we wanted to get to that we yeah. want we want whether we crash and burn but as long as we can you know finish the song and we we we're, it's not just a crap song the whole time. We're like, oh, we totally screwed this one up. <laughs> we could screw up part of it, but then get to a point where, wow, you know, like, 
how did we get here? And it, it's just energizing to the maximum. Um, it just, if we knew that it was a good night, uh, it, we knew that we had some good performances, but we didn't, after listening to it, it uh, I didn't think that we would get to some of those places, but we did. Um, and it was, it was really easy for, for me, I thought so. Um, I would think that the rest of the band w feels the same way. I mean, AJ was just like this, just, you know, let's just play. Let's just do this. And he, and he was totally right. Mm. Um, you know, let's not, it's not a recording. And I, I was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, um, and it, it felt amazing. Um, as for Union Chapel, that, uh, this beautiful, I think it's a hundred year old chapel in New Angola. Uh, it was part of um, the annual New Angola Art Fest. And I was invited back to perform uh, at the chapel this past July. And even though there was microphones and speakers there, the acoustics in that chapel are spot on. Uh, and playing for that environment and that festival um, just put me in a, a different frame of mind. Uh, definitely the other side of the coin to what the bog sounds like. Yeah. And um, uh, the approach to it, uh, it, it felt good looking back at the video uh, that uh, Greg Coons took. Uh, I, I was, uh, it, I didn't release or I'm not going to release uh, all the songs. It'll just be seven of them. And each one, uh, there, there's something there. Some newer songs on there, some older songs. and But the approach uh, felt really good. And that was it, was, it was really easy to go in there because it was just a performance. And uh, it was... Greg set up the mic. Sound good? Yep, sounds good. <laughs> That's it. And we nobody touched anything. And it was just the same thing. Wow. So it was it, it was it was really easy and comfortable. Hmm. Now, of course, uh, doing anything in a chapel has kind of a, a you know a, a religious ring to it or anything like that. Does are you a religious person? Is this uh, did that play any uh, kind of factor in this, or it was just more of I have, because of this past relationship you had with the venue itself? I, it was I. It's part of the art uh, art fest, um, and I'm not as religious as I once was. Um, I have faith. I struggle with it. Um, I pray and I, I need prayers and I, I, I did go to Easter Mass and I felt pretty good with the service. Um, I haven't, I haven't been to church in a while, so it, it felt good to be there with my family. And I, I got a lot out of it, um, more than I've, that I have in, in the past for sure. Mm. But m my faith is there, but I'm, I'm still, I still struggle, uh, with, with it. Um, uh, just everything that, uh, goes along with, uh, Uh, which goes along with whatever religion that you believe in. Sure. Well, or people believe in. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, music is its own religion in a way. You know? yeah, and there wasn't, uh, there wasn't, I didn't, maybe, maybe for a minute I felt, okay, should I, what was the approach? 
Sure. I mean, there was a cross behind me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, which it's it's. Uh, um, it, but it was also comforting and calming to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't. But it wasn't so much of I'm in a chapel. Um, more like the intimacy of the venue. Yeah, more definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I will say that, that was my before my my days at uh, Palooka's Diner. I actually was part of the folk group in, in church, hmm. and I I loved the Psalms uh, so much. Um, I I uh, am a huge supporter of the music in church and I really do love uh, the Psalms uh, so much and uh, I mean there's so many beautifully written songs Psalms uh, that the church has and and what the songs are about and how they can make you feel and put you into a place of empathy or whatever it might be but that would that's a that's a big part of uh, my time in church is to connect with with those psalms and let's you know we'll talk about the uh, the album artwork as well uh, we posted some of that earlier today on social media if you haven't seen it already yeah um Here's a picture of the uh, the Union Chapel. Uh, close to that earlier too, so people could kind of get an idea of like what that looks like. And uh, uh, our photographer uh, here at NEPA scene, Jason Reed Miller, did uh, the artwork for the Bog uh, yeah. EP. So there's the cover there. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a close up sort of thing. And then here's a kind of a collection of art that is uh, you know part of the whole. Package the what? What made you want to take this kind of a, a you know approach with it? Because you didn't see my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could barely see it in that one little that yeah. one on the, the. I don't think we're going to use that one. It. Okay, all right. Uh, there, there's these these uh, releases: Union Chapel and uh, Live at the Bog. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there are going to be digital releases. Hmm. Um, I was. I was on the edge of uh, getting LPs uh, for the Live at the Bog recording, and I was going to have, it, it was tough because there was five of us, so mm-hmm. fitting five is not as easy as fitting four, <laughs> Right. so having, having myself um, but with you can kind of see the base behind for the cover. Mm-hmm. Um, the back cover um, is the the shot of the hands of the guitar, bass, drums, keys, and kind of Jason uh, showed me these, showed me all the photos, mm-hmm. and of course, I I thought I looked terrific and in all the shots and but then the shots of the hands came up and i said that's it Hmm. that i mean that that's like uh you know you're looking for uh when we were recording uh one of the songs at uh at windmill um the keyboard player or, or we were playing a song and we were looking for it to go somewhere because we were playing it live and he played something. I said, that's it. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what we did with the album artwork. Uh, you know, I don't know. He may have, might've taken 60, 80 photo sh- shots. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so of course, you know, you have all these shots. You think, Oh, I'm, I'm, we're totally good. There's definitely there's gonna be tons of shots. Yeah. They're they what turns out were the shots of our hands. <laughs> and it yeah. really came out beautiful. I mean he did a, a, 
a beautiful approach to what our live performance was. Mm. We did a band shot upstairs. A um, lot of shots there. A lot of eyes closed. Yeah. A lot of funny faces. <laughs> a lot of people not looking at where they should be. Yeah. Um, and so... I don't know where that's going to... That'll go up on the website somewhere. Mm. Uh, and... Maybe maybe some other photos will come up too, but that would have been the uh, the, uh, the the covers the cover, but the back cover would have been the four hands okay. of the 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 four band the four other band members. Yeah, so it's just fortuitous that he got those shots. Yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll take a, a couple of uh, comments before we get out of here. So anybody who wants to ask a question or leave any sort of uh, comment, please uh, do so. Let's see. William Spager says hi, Charles. Hey, what's up, Bill? Uh, Jackie Purdy, uh, Charles Avere is one of the nicest guys around and a great player. Oh, she's sweet. <laughs> she's awesome. Uh, Brian Martin. Yes. Uh, he says uh, the heat is in the center. It's uh, true. <laughs> so true. He was there when it happened. It happened in Scranton. Thank you, Brian. He also mentioned uh, Night Watchman. Yes, which is uh, one of your songs. One of yeah, one of our uh, one of the songs uh, that that's we played a version of uh, of that. We didn't keep it, but we we have a good mix of it. So there's some songs that we did play for the Bog back in January 10th uh, of this year. Who knows? They might come up on the website um, another time. But Brian, Brian was there back in the day with Freight Train, and thank you, Brian, for being there. Mr. Uh, Johnny Popko. Hey, you were on his show recently. Yes, right? that was a great, great time. We uh, talked. I think we talked for like three days. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> Uh, he says, uh, Charles Sevier is an angel who answered my call at Knoebels. Oh, he, <laughs> we, we were at Knoebels. Okay. And I was with my family and, uh, my wife's, uh, co-worker's family. And so we were just finishing up under one of the pavilions. The place was packed. Hmm. And we were just about to leave. And uh, this is like prime real estate, you know, because sure. everyone's coming in. And I was like, hey, it's John. So I was like, Mr. Popko, this is yours. Because he had a crew. Mm -hmm. And it was like two, it was like two picnic tables put together because that's how it was set up there. I think it was right near the Phoenix. Yeah. And we, I was, I didn't, I think we were all leaving. So I was just like, all right, I'll see you, John, you know, or... Everything's good. And I, I didn't think, I think uh, we didn't really talk. I, I was kind of, it was just really quick. And then later on, I, I brought it up to him when we were talking. He was like, yes, that was you. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a super, super good good man. Yeah, I've been in the good. scene a long time. Oh, yeah. And it, and it was great to talk with him. I mean, I mean, if you ever get a chance to check his thing out, it's... He having the conversation with with John was was nice because we kind of went all over the place and uh, we got to talk about some things that uh, you know you wanna you wanna uh, expand on. Yeah. So it was it was it was a good time. Yeah, definitely uh, check out the Popco project. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we have. Uh, Ellen Hamilton says, a uh, folk group got me through many a mass. <laughs> it's, tr it's true. <laughs> and the folk group, it was, uh, even, even uh, you know, th that's one thing is, is for, for people starting off with music, being part of the folk group, it, it was massive for me. Mm. And, and, it, and it got me to, it got me to many places, you know, and, and they're all, all my musical experiences have been positive. Hmm. And it all started with the church. So there's, so the, hey, there's, there a, there's a little bit yeah, of a tie yeah. in there, right? 
Uh, Ryan Rolbeski says, uh, thanks for the Jägermeister. Oh, <laughs> I should have brought an extra one, Ryan. Thanks for coming out that night. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you guys for uh, participating. And uh, if you got anything else in there, you make sure we uh, you you uh, toss it down there before we uh, finish up tonight. Um, so uh, you're you're gonna release these uh, EPs. Uh, what's what's the rest of the year looking like for you? Do you have uh, any gigs coming up? Anything uh, yeah. you want to talk about there? Yeah. Well, I've been. Uh, that's another thing. You know, you get to. Uh, you, I'm trying to be strategic and uh, with some of these things, but um, the tough part uh, with playing with some incredible musicians is they play music with other people and they do their <laughs> own things too. Sure. So it's it's tough to get everyone together. I will. I know I'm gonna book a few more shows. Um, I'm my goal is to have six more shows before 2025. Okay. Stay tuned um, on uh, at um Instagram, uh, Facebook, Threads, Twitter, all that newspapers here, NEPA scene. Um, uh, April 24th, um, you could do two things. You could not come and see me play and go see the Pat Casper Band at the Bog. <laughs> uh, he's got a brand new album. It's great. Um, or if you live in Luzerne County, you can come and see uh, Martin Beal, uh, Whiskey and Woods, and myself at the stone creek barn grill and humlock creek uh whiskey and woods they they're the hosts and they bring they do a songwriter night on wednesdays uh down there and uh but i have i've tried to get a couple other gigs together but it didn't happen um but i'm not giving up rich i'm gonna <laughs> keep trying Hey, I'm available the first. I'm only available the second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Hey, I can do the 15th, but I'm playing in Weatherly, so I might be late. Oh, he's going to be late? Then I don't think we should do this. <laughs> and I can keep going because it's, sure. it's just really, really tough um, to get everyone on board and then perform and have a band that's like, all right, we know everything, right? Let's, you know, let's, let's kick it out of the park. Um, so I'm still trying to put some things together, but mainly if you, you know, stay focused on the, the website, um, you'll see what's going on or online, but I'm going to be going back up to uh, windmill agency um, I have uh, some new songs that I'd like to go back maybe late summer, early fall mm -hmm. to do maybe maybe an EP, like a three song thing. Um, and But also around that same time, uh, I want to go back to the bog and do another live recording and record these live songs um, at the bog again and do another uh, another volume. Okay. Of live music. Nice. So, uh, one, one thing I wanted to touch on before we, we got out of here is, you know, a lot of the artists we've had on recently or maybe have only, you know, just started out or, you know, been there uh, uh, for a little bit, a couple, a couple of years. You know, any PA scene is going to turn uh, 10 years old this September. Congratulations. So, thank you so much. So we've been around a little bit, and I did, you know, four years in newspapers before that. So, you know, I've, I've kind of seen a little bit of how things change and stuff over time. But, you know, you being in the, the music scene for, you know, over 30 years now. Yeah. Uh, so you've seen a lot of different changes, uh, eras maybe, if you want to, you know, put it that way or... You know, the way that, uh, you know, things were, it's it's funny, I talk to, like, the people coming up now in the music scene, and they don't know what it was like 
10, 15, 20 years ago. And uh, I know me and Popko have definitely talked a lot about that, too, because he came in as an intern at the Weekender mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, back when the Weekender was super popular. It yeah. was like the way to kind of get arts and entertainment information around here. Um, you know, people still read papers at that point. Yeah. So it was very, very different sort of world. So he kind of came in in an era where, you know, like the club scene was really big and there were, you know, bands every week and stuff. And now people are kind of like, oh, where, where is the live music happening? That's what you're doing. Thing. it. And, and I think it's still it's still there. It's just in different forms. But maybe you could talk a little bit about like maybe some of the changes that you've seen over time or you know, it's how, bit... how 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 have you adapted over time? I kept doing what I did. Honestly, I really think it goes back to what we were talking about before the show started to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the gentleman who came in from New Jersey. Yes. Uh, yeah, it came into the, uh, the open mic. To, uh, at the V-Spot. Mm-hmm. And I, I got to talk with uh, the V-Spot, Vinny. Mm-hmm. And we had a nice conversation. And we kind of went back in time, you know, and talked about, you know, what... Oh, you know, I haven't been here since it was... Uh, what was it? Crackers. Yeah. yeah. You know? J.D. Crackers. J.D. Crackers. And I would come to see the Village Idiots play. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it was a different time. It You were out till 2 a.m. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about it. And you were going to go to the glider. Or you were going to go to Chicks. Yep. You're going to get some food. Or you're going to go to an after party or an after... Um, after hours club or something there was a, a something it was just it there was nightlife yeah um but in the end as for the performance part of it i really think it just comes down to someone doing what they do and people having the open mind for I, they don't have to be stuck there the whole time listening to everything but if they could take something in just like a a regular open mic would be which it's amazing because i ran an open mic and the great thing about it was okay when i started playing there would be clubs or coffee houses you know three songs or 15 minutes Hmm. whichever it is okay this here's your time Hmm. and Maybe you totally demolished two songs. And people, who is this? But then they do this one song or one joke or one performance of something or magic trick or something that just totally stops you. And you're you're focused on it. And I don't think... That that is never going to change. Yeah. Um, I've that's that's what I go out for is to try and go ahead, win me over. Like do do it. You know there there are some performers or or bands that they can have me right from the beginning, mm. or I've got to wait. You know. I really, I, I just want to be captured. And I think that's what we all want. Sure. You know, we want to be taken away somehow or be part of something or, you know, rage or scream, you know, mm-hmm. or, or just how quiet can I be, you know, or maybe it's a visual thing. Yeah. Because we've all, we've all, uh, from, when I, my first band, we all went to different musical places. You know, our drummer went uh, this sonic, he's in this sonic visual space that is so, um, that that's the journey that you want to go on musically. Uh, great circles in Philadelphia, check it out. They're doing so many amazing things. Uh, and that's, that's the goal in my life is to try and be 
taken away, you know, mm-hmm. from from a performance or from a song or in, whether it's a, a, a cover song or an original song. It's about the performance and how they and how they put it to the listener. And I, I, I've, I've seen a lot of bands through the years. I mean, there's a lot of uh, great new groups that I, I don't know of that are here locally. And it seems like, you know, it's definitely the blood is flowing, you know, for sure. You know, and it's, and it's awesome because you're a huge part of it because you've been a part of doing your approach and you're not stopped. That's that's mm-hmm. the wild thing. Like you, <laughs> you are non-stop, yeah. and and that is uh, is something that every city needs. Mm. And thank you oh, for doing that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and that's and from being from watching online or going to the B spot and checking it out, or going to the Ritz, checking mm. out there. Uh, I mean just alone that finally the Ritz is doing it. Yeah. You know, and this is, I mean, I played there in the early nineties, uh, mid nineties. And it was, they didn't really have, I mean, it was very minimal that they did something there, but this, there's, there's the, the train is totally on the tracks rolling through. Yep. And it's great because there's so much interest, the V spot and so many other venues. It's kind of, it's, it's awesome that I'm, I'm all booked up, Hmm. which is great. Sure. I mean, not for me because (laughs) I would love to have a live band gig to promote the live band (laughs) album and then maybe I'll make the record. Yeah. But I don't, I, I, I got to think monetarily sometimes. Yeah. So, um, baby steps, only 30 years. <laughs> um, but, uh, it's, I don't, I don't know if I can say, you know, so much has, ch- has changed in these years. I, I still see it as the same. Hmm. And I don't, I hope it doesn't change too much because it, I'm, I'm still, not a big fan of the big barrier at concerts, you know? Yes. Where they have, I forget what it's called. I understand the the reason for it. But, you know, we survived so long with, uh, without it. Hmm. But it's, it's a, a little bit of a detachment yeah. sometimes. But, but sometimes not. Uh, because depending on how you want to take in a show, uh, say at the arena. Yeah. I, I got to see a concert there and we had uh, like uh, we weren't we were we had a nice visual shot of the stage and but we were sitting we weren't in the general admissions uh, standing area. Mm-hmm. So I was of course that barrier's up there yeah. but I wasn't physically seeing it so I didn't even know it was there, but um, it's great that you can still go out um, to the bog. You know they're doing Wednesday nights, yeah. Um, and for what COVID did to everybody, it's awesome that a bog uh, music night is happening again uh, because it, music was gone there for the longest time. Uh, for a number of reasons and it's just awesome that they could have various bands perform there just like you have various performers every Tuesday Mm -hmm. and the V spot has you know they're booked till 2027 I think yeah it's pretty crazy how far and a a number of venues you know down in Luzerne County and uh, the jazz cafe is usually booked pretty uh, out pretty far yeah and so that is a good thing but in the same breath we're losing places too so yeah having some going back to you it's 
it's good that you're there because you're keeping something alive. Whether, okay, I've, I'm doing it at my home base at the V spot, but I also have the luxury of doing it at other venues. Yeah. And that's, that's what's keeping the scene alive. It really is. Um, but I'm, I'm just there to hopefully be taken away by someone's voice or instrument or as a whole what they can do for me. And I, I, want, I want to be a part of it um, or share it with someone. Um, that's, that's the goal is to be able to leave your home, spend some money, have some drinks, and enjoy yourself and not get pulled over on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, it's a good place to leave it. I appreciate you uh, coming out and uh, sitting down with us and uh, talking about the, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing these come out and uh, you know, how well they're received and everything. And hopefully we'll get some, uh, some live shows to go with. Yes, definitely. So uh, I'll keep, let you know. Keep, yeah. Keep us posted. Uh, so Charles Havira's uh, Live at Union Chapel EP will re be released on April 23rd, and his Live at the Bog EP is set for release on May 21st. And uh, will that be all major streaming platforms, some of the major ones? Uh, I think some of the major ones. Mm -hmm. um, but the main focus right now, we're, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to get something uh to get an answer, a, a full answer on where it's going to be. So if you could stay tuned to social media, you'll, I know it's, it's definitely going to be on my website. Yes. Uh, I, and thank you, by the way, for having a website. Yes. You'd be surprised how many uh, artists these days do not have one, mm -hmm. uh, which is crazy to me uh, because I, I get that like, Facebook and all these big companies have kind of a grip on this stuff, but we've also seen how quickly that can change. And so you think that your website is facebook.com slash whatever your right. band name is <laughs> yeah. until, you know, a year or two from now, Mark, Z uh, Mark Zuckerberg just decides, I'm going to sell this. And yeah. it goes off to some other company and they change everything and now all your stuff disappears and now you, it's gone forever. Uh, I'm thrilled that to have one. Yeah, I, I mean, I I would, uh, I I have kind of a love hate relationship with social media, of course, you yeah. know, doing what I do and stuff. Um, but I think a lot of artists don't realize like that stuff is not a website in the sense of like I also I you know if I'm looking for you as a journalist or as maybe just a music fan. I want to be able to read your bio. I want to be able to find where your music is, all that kind of stuff. And uh, not everybody's social media is the best at that. I, I do think having a website is still important. I know that the web has changed a lot, but uh, I, I really am happy when a, especially uh, local artists have a website with all of that information, photos of the band, all that good stuff. Yeah, you know? there's in, in the music <clears throat> section of the site there's certain areas where you can click and you'll you'll find out the um you know who's playing what instrument where was it um where it was recorded who the engineers were who was produced by um i'm i'm as uh time goes by i i have numerous photos and videos that still haven't haven't been added yeah so in the next couple months there's going to be more to the site um, then that'll actually be on uh, social media. Mm -hmm. so. and, and news websites, while you're at it, um, make your archives public <laughs> so we can actually get some of this history. Uh, that's a topic for another time and hopefully one that we're going to be talking about on the podcast relatively soon uh, if uh, the, the guests come together for that. But uh, yeah, with that, a lot of that information gets lost over time. And, you know, I'm... I'm kind of backdating some of my articles from before I started any PA scene and kind of adding them there so that like some of that stuff exists somewhere on the web, you know? Yeah. I feel like it, it's, it's tough doing research sometimes where it's like, I know you've been interviewed many times, but how many of your interviews are out there searchable, available? Right. Not many, which yeah. is sad. 
yeah. you know, like they should be. That's 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 local history just as much as anything else. True. And uh, you know, those websites disappear, or they decide one day to you know change layouts, and they forget to add their archives, and or they lock them behind a paywall. Again, another issue for another time. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's uh, all right. Thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, this was a lot of fun. And uh, we will be uh, back here next Wednesday uh, with a new show. So if you enjoyed the conversation, please like, please share, uh, please leave a comment, all of that good stuff uh, for the algorithm gods so that we can please them and uh, continue to reach more and more people. Uh, we will see you here uh, next week, and uh, have a good night, everybody. Good night.